The OptiMatrix Maker is a desktop instrument for designing and creating crystallization screens quickly and easily. In developing the OptiMatrix Maker, our goal was to create a simple and intuitive user experience that would lead to quick, accurate, and affordable production of crystallization screens, particularly for crystal optimization, but with minimal training required so that it would be suitable for both individual labs with a few users or core labs with many users. Creating a screen with the OptiMatrix Maker begins with the eScreen Builder at emeraldbiosystems.com slash eScreen Builder. eScreen Builder is the tool that is used to design a fully customizable screen in a matter of a few clicks. This is eScreen Builder. Let me show you how it works. As an example, I will design an optimization screen based on condition A1 of Wizard 3. When designing an optimization screen based on a commercial condition, first select the manufacturer of the original screen. I will select Emerald Biosystems, the manufacturer of Wizard 3. And then I will use the next drop-down menu to select the screen, Wizard 3. After clicking on the screen, an array pops up that contains the data corresponding to the selected screen, so that when I click on A1, the contents of that condition appear in the table above. Once the desired condition is selected, click Accept and a default optimization screen is automatically designed that is based on the initial concentrations and pHs of the original components of the condition. Now at this point, I can simply accept the design and create this screen using the OptiMatrix Maker if I'm happy with it. But of course, you may want to edit the screen to fit your own design. Clicking on the individual components will indicate how the concentrations of those components will be varied within the screen. In this case, the default screen is varying the ammonium citrate concentration from 180 to 200 millimolar and the PEG3350 from 18 to 22 percent, both varied horizontally across the screen. But I would like to change the parameters to create a larger variance. So I can double click on the ammonium citrate line and edit the gradient so that it goes from 20 to 400 millimolar throughout the screen. Next, I will double click on the PEG3350 and edit the gradient so that it goes from 2 to 28 percent throughout the screen. But instead of a horizontal variance, I will change this to vertical variance so that each of my 96 conditions are different. Now we see that the PEG3350 concentration is varied vertically on the screen. Before accepting this design and actually creating the screen with the OptiMatrix Maker, I would like to point out some of the other features of eScreen Builder that allow you to truly customize your design. The Add button allows you to add a custom solution from a large database of chemicals and buffers. Simply select the desired chemical or buffer and click Select to add it to your formulation. Similarly, the Remove and Clear All buttons allow you to eliminate solutions from your formulation. These two functions, along with the built-in database, allows the user to create a screen from any combination of chemicals, even if your starting condition is not based on a commercial screen. There are two standard screen types that can be used with eScreen Builder. Component variation is what I've chosen for our example. But there is also an option called the Rikert optimization, which can be done with a three component screen. The Rikert optimization automatically creates four quadrants with mini optimization screens in each quadrant. In some cases, 96 conditions are more than are necessary for the optimization screen. The menu in the lower right allows you to change the number of conditions to be produced so that you can produce a 24, 48, or 96 condition screen. For our example, we will stick with our original design in a 96 condition screen. Now that I'm happy with my design, I simply click the OptiMatrix Maker button, give the file a good name, save it to a portable USB drive in a folder called Protocols, and it's time to head to the instrument. Now that I have designed my screen, I need to load it onto the instrument to begin production. I'll plug in the USB drive into the port on the front of the instrument, load the screen by going to Load Protocol, Add Protocol, and selecting the desired file. My Wizard 3 Condition 1 file is now loaded on the machine, so I click the Play button to start. 
First, I come to the Prepare Stock screen. This step allows me to see what solutions are loaded on the instrument, and importantly, it prevents me from starting the production if there's a solution missing, one of the many safeguards to prevent mistakes. According to the screen, we already have water loaded on syringe 1, so we just need to add our other two components, ammonium citrate and PEG3350. First, the instrument asks for ammonium citrate, so I'll click on Add Ammonium Citrate, and it brings up a screen with a set of values that pertain to this specific solution. These are default values that can be adjusted in the setup menu if desired. Here, I'll just need to adjust the concentration of the ammonium citrate to one molar or 1000 millimolar. Then I can tell the instrument where I'll be loading the stock solution. I'll be using position 2A. Lastly, I click Save to confirm my changes. And here's my one molar solution of ammonium citrate, dyed yellow for this demonstration. I just need to place it in position 2A and then attach the tubing. My ammonium citrate is loaded. Time to do the same for my PEG3350 solution. You'll notice that the instrument knows that it needs the PEG3350, so it asks for it, just like it did for the ammonium citrate. So I'll go through the same process. This time, I don't need to adjust the concentration, as I'll be adding 50% weight per volume PEG3350 as my stock solution. I select position 3A for the PEG and save. And here is my 50% weight per volume PEG3350 solution, dyed blue for this demonstration. I place it in position 3A, secure the tubing, and I'm ready to go. At this point, all of my required solutions are loaded on the instrument, and the OptiMatrix Maker knows that, so it produces the Run button in the lower right, indicating that it knows it has everything it needs to make the screen. One other thing to point out is the target volume at the top of the screen. The target volume is the final volume that will be in each of the wells at the end of the run, and it is editable by clicking on the Change button. My target volume is one milliliter, which is what I want in this case, so I'm ready to go. I click Run, and the validation screen comes up. This is when the instrument compares the screen you designed to the stock solutions you added and the target volume you requested to make sure that it is possible to make the screen. So if you add a stock solution that is not concentrated enough to make the screen you designed, or if the pH range of your buffers is not wide enough for the pH gradient you've programmed, the instrument will let you know what needs to be changed. In this case, it just asks if the solutions are primed, and I did that already, so I click yes, and the production begins. That's all there is to it. The screen will provide a constant update throughout the production to let you know what each of the syringes are doing and what action is taking place throughout, including a bar at the top indicating how much of the screen has been produced as a percentage. It also provides a box to click in the lower left corner to automatically clean the instrument when it completes the run. From this point on, the OptiMatrix Maker takes care of everything. You can move on to your other work around the lab. Total time to make the screen depends on target volume, the number of conditions produced, and the number of stocks used in each well. Here's a close-up of the needles during dispensation. One syringe fills while the other pumps, so there is never any downtime. And here's the finished product, a complete optimization screen ready for crystallization experiments, and it took only a matter of minutes from initial design to completed production.